A, B, C. It's easy as one, two, three, as simple as do, re, mi. Michael Jackson got it right when he sang those words. Welcome to Plural's ABCs of Art, where we bring you key people, places, ideas, and terms in Southeast Asian art, one letter at a time. What action do people think of when they hear the word art? Chances are they picture someone doing this. Drawing. We draw all the time. Maybe you doodle while listening to a boring lecture. Or maybe you draw flowcharts at work. Maybe you played with crayons as a child. Or maybe you even accidentally drew on the walls. Oops! Hey, don't feel bad about it. The first examples of art in human history were made in the exact same way. Cave paintings. Our ancestors drew the things they saw around them as a way of interacting with their environment and expressing their wonder at the world. Drawing is regarded as the ultimate foundation of art, and life drawing class is a must for anyone pursuing classical art training. This ability to draw accurately is a test of an artist's powers of observation, motor control, memory, and even strategic thinking. Drawing was traditionally used as a way of preparing for final artworks in other materials, such as painting, sculpture, or architecture. We call this type of drawing sketching, as a way of investigating an idea before creating the final work. Artist Ko Kai Ting is a printmaker and painter who focuses on creating visual narratives that explore the conflict between individual happiness and the expectations of society. Here she is to tell us more about how she uses drawings and preparatory sketches in her artistic process. So before I start on the actual artwork, like the final product, I will do some sketch, then I will try out like, I will do some shading on top, and also sometimes I will experiment with uh, different patterns and also like uh, different materials. For this one, it's like, this is inspired by a crab, but because I always feel uh, the lack of crabs is quite sexy, so I just like put it together and see how it turns out. As a printmaker and painter, drawing comprises a large extent of my work process. It allows me to try out certain form and shape before I execute on the final products. So to me, it doesn't have to be limited to a specific way. It's more like an extension of what I wish to convey. While drawing was traditionally used to prepare and plan for a fully realized artwork in some other medium, it can also be an art form in its own right. These works are from False Truths, a series of charcoal drawings by Singapore artist Yen Yun Chen. At first glance, these beautiful works look just like classical still life paintings. Because they are so realistic, we can almost smell the fragrance of the fresh flowers. But wait, look closer and you realize that they aren't all real flowers there are artificial flowers hidden among them, blurring the line between the real and the false, the truth and a lie. Drawings, especially realistic ones, have the power to convince us that they depict the truth, even when they actually don't. This perceived truthfulness of drawing makes it an easy tool for communication. Here's an example. When was the last time you felt genuinely excited to learn about financial literacy? How about mental health? or the pursuit of happiness. Combining drawing with text is helpful to make complicated concepts simple and easy to understand. Drawings help ideas come to life, and they also help us understand faster, better, and deeper. Drawing has always helped change the way we see the world. During the Renaissance, artists and scientists used illustrations to depict different aspects of the world, from plants and animals, to the human body and even space. In the colonial era, when photography was at its infancy, the scientific study of botanical plants from the colonies required detailed illustrations to be made of the specimens. Here is a beautiful illustration of a red ceiling wax palm by the Singapore Botanic Garden's first resident botanical illustrator, James de Alwis. Fast forward to the 20th century and take a look at this. Would you call this a drawing? The answer is yes. 
It's Saul Lewitt's Wall Drawing Number 338, which we saw at the National Gallery of Singapore in 2018. Take a closer look at these marks on the wall. They were carefully made by professional draftsmen following a precise set of instructions from the artist. In the 20th century, contemporary artists radically expanded our ideas about drawing and its possibilities, embracing abstraction, technical and diagrammatic drawing, minimalism, and conceptual art. Today, drawing continues to be well-loved, not just by professional artists, but by people from all walks of life, as a way to share their love for the places they live in, one drawing at a time. Here in Singapore, a growing community of enthusiasts, Urban Sketchers Singapore, meets regularly to go on sketch walks, making sketches of beloved sites and spaces, and preserving precious memories for tomorrow. At the end of the day, drawing isn't just something you do with your hands. It's also about what's in your heart and in your mind. Just like the first caveman scratching out images of a successful hunt on the walls of a cave, drawing is a way to make our thoughts, feelings, and experiences visible and to share them with others. So, don't let doubts about your artistic talent stop you. If our ancestor cavemen could draw, so can you.